Jamel, I want to play some video for you here of a bunch of Heat players uh, picking, making predictions on the Iowa-South Carolina game. I want to ask you if you notice anything about this video of Heat players making their predictions on the game yesterday. Put that video up, please. South Carolina. Go with Iowa. South Carolina. South Carolina. Roll with the Big Ten. Iowa. Uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. I'm going to go Iowa. I'm going to go Iowa. Uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. Iowa. Oh. Did you notice? <laughs> did you notice anything there? No. Are you going to say it was split among racial lines? Because I don't think it was, because I, I thought I saw somebody black pick. Jamal Kane. Jamal Kane yes. saved us from a race war amongst the Heat. Oh, thank you, Jamal. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Woo, I was getting scared there. I was like, oh, no, don't let all the black people pick South Carolina. <laughs> I mean, they were undefeated. Uh, How? Uh... Yeah, I mean, exactly. I was like, I don't think it, it's, it's just that. It's like South Carolina is undefeated. They were the heavy favorites. Maybe some of them watch uh, women's college basketball a little more closely than others. Dan, it's not always about race. I hate to tell you. <laughs> how, uh, how great has the last uh, last four months been to see these numbers explode where you get to a place on Friday night that ESPN has the most viewers it's ever had for any kind of basketball game? Yeah, to see the growth of the game um, has really been remarkable. My first beat that I got when I became a, a reporter professionally full-time was at the News and Observer in Raleigh. And I covered women's basketball. I covered Duke, North Carolina State, and University of North Carolina, all you know, kind of at the same time. Uh, so I was there when North Carolina State went to its first Final Four in 1998 with Kay Yao as, as a coach. And then when the WNBA started, Charlotte had a team, and I also got to do a lot of coverage of the start of the WNBA. And, and just seeing where the game was, um, just in terms of interest, in terms of style, uh, you know, media attention, all of those things. It's just so far and beyond what it used to be. Uh, my friend, LaChina Robinson, who obviously uh, played in college, is a great analyst for basketball for ESPN. She had a tweet that I thought really got to the heart of the matter. You know, seeing these records, these uh, ratings records that were broken over the last week, LaChina tweeted something out like, you know, these records are for the women who are playing in empty gyms, the women who are forced to go on long bus trips to get, uh, you know, back and forth to games, the women who really had to eat a lot of the misogyny, the neglect, the disparity. Um, these numbers and where this game is now is for them. And I, I thought it was great because this is the dream that somebody like Cheryl Miller had in her mind, even though, I have to remind people, Cheryl Miller's national television debut drew, I think, 11 million viewers. So, but nevertheless, still uh, stars like her who have been giving their all to this game for a long time. I, I think for them, this is just really rewarding to see because so many people over decades stood in their way. Uh, because, you know, as much as people want to think that this is about, oh, they just have a player that everybody likes now, this is finally what we've been telling women. We have reached these inflection points many times before in this game. And what's usually happened is that the gatekeepers have decided uh, not to have consistent investment in the game. And that's kept it from propelling forward. And so more than anything, I'm hoping that this is the moment where the media, uh, the brands, um, you know, the fans, everybody aligns to continue to support this game and not just one or two players and understanding overall that this is just a wonderful product to be attached to. But mostly, Dan, I'm happy for those who really laid the groundwork uh, in order for somebody like Caitlin Clark and the, the attention she's drawing to be possible. Even at your most hopeful, could you have expected the number that we saw Friday night? No. And, and, and uh, I was thinking about this in terms of what would be the best matchup for the growth of the game. And it, it's funny because I thought it would be out, Iowa, South Carolina. And I'm very anxious, unless you guys have some intel I don't. I haven't seen that number yet, but I do think this could – be again them toppling the number of Friday night but if that happens I mean Dan you're talking about them setting three ratings records in one week and 
you know, to give people some idea about how big this number is, I believe last year's NBA finals averaged somewhere between 13 and 14 million. Um, that was the average viewership for every NBA finals game. It's beaten a lot of the, you know, the events that have been promoted and cultivated, the men's events throughout the years. And I, I think there's a legitimate chance that this uh, championship game could come very close, if not beat. Uh, what the men do tonight. And so, no, I could not have imagined this. I thought the number would be pretty good, but I thought it would maybe taper off just slightly a little bit uh, from last year. And that that clearly wasn't the case. That number is not out yet. We will uh, give it to the audience once we have it. But Jamel, I'm wondering, do you think it will continue into next season? I do, um, because I think that this has really created some genuine, strong interest in a lot of people. And more importantly, they got to see who's coming next. I, I, honestly, this the freshman class that is in college basketball, women's college basketball right, right now is a game changer. So if you watch the South Carolina-Iowa game, how could you not see Malaysia for Wiley, who's my favorite player to, to watch? And that's no shot at Caitlin Clark at all. But when I saw I, uh, me and a bunch of my girlfriends, we went to Paris uh, to see South Carolina play Notre Dame at the beginning of the season. And that's when I first saw Malaysia for Wiley. And I was like, she is incredible. And so you see her, you see Juju Watkins, you see Hannah Hidalgo at Notre Dame, and, and even the remaining team that South Carolina will have once Cardoza leaves. I mean, they're, the game is in great hands. And I, I do think that while people recognize there was an all-time great player playing in the game in, in Caitlin Clark, there was also a lot of great, great players that were feeding, um, that will have compelling storylines and, and give people more than a reason to watch. I also think her popularity is definitely going to follow in the WNBA, I mean, already we saw the Las Vegas Aces announce that they are moving to a bigger arena, something I have to tell people that they've done before. So this didn't just start with Caitlin, Caitlin Clark, um, but they're going to move to a bigger arena for the game against the Indiana Fever because presumably next week in the WNBA draft, they're going to pick Caitlin Clark uh, number one. But they're already going to move that game to a bigger arena because they know what the interest will be. And so I think this is definitely going to carry over because now we have the additional storyline of WNBA players allegedly hating on Caitlin Clark. And so people are going to want to follow that drama just to see how does she stack up when it comes to truly, you know, with really playing with the best of the best of the best at the next level. What do you make of that hating that you speak of? You know, what's so interesting. And I'm a, I'm a tie this to this. I, I Listen, I, I'm too old to be as heavily invested as in rap beef as I used to be. Okay. So they got this whole J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar thing going. J. Cole apologized for, you know, some response bars he made after Kendrick Lamar took a shot at him. So it's like this whole mess, I think, between that and WrestleMania. The men folk are losing their mind right now. But that's beside the point. Uh, it's funny how people are complaining that J. Cole apologized because they want to see beef. They want to see tension. And they hate the fact that he apologized. And some people were even critical of his response rap to Kendrick Lamar saying that wasn't hard enough. We need some grittier. Same set people when they see Diana Taurasi and, and uh, Brianna Stewart giving their honest take as players about how they feel, uh, how they feel Caitlin Clark fits historically. And also Diana Taurasi talking about where she'll fit in the next level. Then it's, oh, no, no, no. You women, it's your responsibility to politely welcome her into the game. Listen, First of all, there was nothing wrong with what Diana Tar Tarasi said. I saw the complete interview, and she gave her her props for being a great player. But she said reality is going to set in in the WNBA. Again, 12 teams, 144 roster spots. It is highly competitive. You see great players who were great college players get cut in the WNBA all the time or can't make a roster. And that's not to say she'll be in that position, but it is to say if people are expecting her to average 30 a game at the next level out the gate, that's probably not going to happen. And that doesn't mean that Caitlin Clark isn't good, but there is going to be a difference in style of play, who she's guarding, um, who's, uh, who's guarding her, than what she has seen in the NCAA. I thought this is sports. I thought this is what we, we often see. And I just find it funny that we're still in that mode that women have to be kind all the time and nice and they have to, you know, be flowery about their opinions. And to me, it's bespoke more of that. I mean, Brianna Stewart has four national championships. If somebody asked her, will she be the GOAT if she doesn't win a ring, what do they expect her to say when she's won four of them things? I mean, there's a lot of great women who have won titles. Mino Moore, I mean, like, there's a, there's a long list 
And so in their mind, considering how many great players have won titles, yes, the standard criteria for you to be considered a GOAT is that you have to win. And she was not the only former player that said that. A number of them did. And I don't know. They played the game. I sort of trust their opinion. <laughs> I, uh, uh, When it comes to music, I trust Bomani's opinion. Bomani is really uh, disappointed in J. Cole, it seems like, for not going back into the beef. I thought it showed a, a maturity. A What's wrong with an apology? A, huh? ma a maturity, a spirituality. I thought it showed they, a... Man, nobody a wants that. Nobody <laughs> wants your spirituality and apology, okay? <laughs> you know, and, and granted... I, I come from again. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that I know the ins and outs of all this beef and why Kendrick. I mean, I kind of know about the beef with Drake, but we're coming from a generation where we saw where you know Pac rapped on "Hit 'Em Up," which is maybe to date the coldest opening bar I've ever heard, and also one that made me want to instantly pray and reevaluate my life with God. Those are the kind of bars you want, okay? You want bars that'll be like, "Damn, he said that in front of his mama and everybody." That's what you kind of want. And so there's a theater to hip hop. And I get that there has been a downside in the sense that we have seen things that have been said on wax, so to speak, play out in real life. But these two dudes aren't that dude. And I, I, I think that there was just this expectation that they were that people were finally going to get the heavyweight fight that they wanted to see. So I get it. I get why the men folk are all like disappointed because, you know, thinking about the era I came from where people really took shots at each other. Uh, in, in music, um, th this seems to fall a little short. It's like, we got mature rappers now? And I was like, now I understand why Andre 3000 said he wants no more parts of the rap world for now. That's why he out there playing flutes. That's exactly why, because he knew he knew he didn't have it in him to do this kind of stuff I'm anymore. Not, I'm not going to shame one of the best to ever do it for embracing no, adulthood. Him. No, I know. I know for denying no. us the entertainment of please put your poetry. Please let me watch your poetry <laughs> eviscerate another guy who's also great at this. <laughs> but I exactly, man. Was it a foul? <laughs> Was it a foul on Friday night? It was not a foul. And what? everything. No. Okay. So here, here's my, here's my take is that to me, consistency is the most important part of officiating. Right. And given how that game was called, there was nothing consistent about that call and where it came. There was also clearly no advantage game from the play, a slight lean in, a, a slight little movement. I just didn't consider it egregious enough at that point in the game to make that call. And, and granted, I am not the person that believes that it is the official's responsibility to necessarily keep our entertainment, um, you know, our entertainment possibilities alive. Like everybody wanted the players to decide the game. I was still could have very easily won that game. Who knows where that offensive possession was going with, with UConn? Still could have happened. But we watched this great game, you know, for four plus quarters. And then for it to end that way, it's like, come on, man. Like, it, it just was such a letdown and a call that I didn't think was necessary. Like, I, I think if somebody gets a shot off after that, nobody's going to be like, oh, but that moving screen, practically nobody. Everybody's just going to say, okay, they got a sh shot off. They, they missed it or they made it. End of story. So much like, um, you know, with the Detroit Lions, uh, with the NFL earlier this season, when we saw a fantastic play of theirs get completely ruined, you just don't want to leave people with that feeling of ruining something over something that's so ticky-tack that you've overlooked a thousand times in the same damn game. Purdue, UConn, 9.20 p.m. Eastern tonight. You staying up? Oh, she's on the West Coast. Oh, shoot. The the, the yeah. men are playing tonight? If you were oh, on totally the East forgot. Coast, would you no, be I'm staying kidding. up? <laughs> if, I were on, I, if I were on the East Coast, yes. I have, it would be a fight. I would be fighting <laughs> for my life by the second quarter, by the uh, second half. I'm not going to lie. But I will stay up for this because I do want to see these colossal giants and these big men in UConn and Purdue uh, to see what comes of their matchup. And, and, you know, obviously to see where UConn going for the back-to-back, -back, uh, kind of how they rate in history. So there's there's some compelling 
uh, elements that will get me to stay up. And luckily, I am in L.A. because otherwise I wouldn't have made it to you guys. I'm going to be honest. There are reports here that Kentucky intends to offer Dan Hurley a deal (laughs) that he can't refuse. And it would Mm. reportedly make him the highest paid coach in college basketball history. Wow. Uh, Before before I let you go here, Jamel, Dwayne Johnson regrets endorsing Joe Biden for president in 2020 because, quote, what that caused was something that tears me up in my guts, which is division. It caused an incredible amount of division. I realize now going into this election. I will not do that. My goal is to bring this country together. I believe in that. There will be no endorsement at this level of influence. I will keep my politics to myself. It's between me and the ballot box. But I will tell you this, like a lot of us out there, not trusting of all politicians, I do trust the American people and whoever they vote for. That is my president and who I will support 100 percent. Your thoughts? That is the most statement, non-statement I've ever heard. And I, I love Dwayne Johnson. Like, you know, during my time at ESPN, if you ask people the number one person who they felt like when they did the car wash was like the best person that came through there in terms of like how they interacted with people, how nice they were, it was easily uh, the rock or number two would be Kevin Hart. And that's the kind of, frankly, political cowardice that's hard to respect. I don't understand how Joe Biden is the divisive one when what he's running against is pushing bigotry, uh, xenophobia, uh, every other phobia and ism you could possibly name. That is what they're literally campaigning on. Joe Biden is not campaigning on those same things. And so I don't even understand how Joe Biden got attacked for being the one who's dividing people. Um, If he wants to stop the division, then he shouldn't at all make it seem like he is aligned with the side that is pushing only division. That's their entire agenda. They have no policy on the entire thing that they have is to get you to hate somebody else that you perceive is lower on the totem totem pole than you. And so even though he said he was going to keep his, his ballot to himself, he actually didn't because there's only one other person who will be the presidential nominee. So unless you plan to write in yourself um, or plan to vote for Donald Trump, You've made your decision that you are voting for xenophobia and and bigotry and all these other things that you claim to stand against. So I just thought that wasn't his best moment. And it was so unnecessary, too, because I don't know. I wasn't going around wondering who The Rock was voting for. So I don't know why he decided he needed to share that. That's right. Cue my music. Friendly neighborhood (laughs) race, ladies. (laughs) See you later, Jamel. Thank you. All right. See y'all. Dan, it is time to update March Sadness. We are down to eight teams left in the tournament. Wow. One more matchup in each region. What are you most excited for, Dan, to hear? Because I know you've been more excited about this than anybody. I want to hear how the voting is going. It has been behind a uh, behind a secret uh, wall, and so I don't know who's winning, how the, how the voting's going. The voting is going great. It's on our Instagram, and it's been – we've had some upsets. We got a 16 seed that made this, the, uh, the Elite Eight wow. in the region of death. Well, spoiler alert, it's Roy as the bear. In fact, we can throw that up now if you do. Let's just wow. do that matchup first. You know what? I'm going Rats. rogue. Yeah. Yeah. Good for I'm you, going Roy. rogue with our team. And let's not forget that March Sadness is yeah. presented by Get Your Guide. Discover over 100,000 unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at getyourguide.com. Get the region of death has two matchups left. 16 seed Roy Bellamy wow. as the bear Woo. going against... Lucy's Bobby Petrino wow. as the three seed. Wow. So Rocky, Stugatz is pathetic one seed Rocky of him just pathetic. wearing, uh, being Rocky Balboa by just wearing a sweat, uh, a hoodie of some sort, Ooh. has been uh, Roy is a 16 seed from the television show on Hulu, The Bear. Yeah, it was a poor seeding. Uh, it was. It's a very good costume, and so that, based on voting, has gotten into the Lucy. It's just, it's just them two now. In the, and that's all that's left that's in the right, bracket Dano. of death. Elite that, eight. Yep. So oh, those two, we will see who of those two makes it to the final four. In it's going to be Roy. In the song region. In the song region, the one and two seeds made it wow. through. Wow. We have the one seed. Shock. And that is, of course, some people think this is going to ruin the whole tournament. This is UConn this year. The one seed, Puka Nakua. His name is Cooper. Good at running curls. But when his hammy got a tear, he saw Puka standing there. His blade diminished. Hostel take over. Nakua hopped into the car. McVeigh has maybe found a star. And then that Stafford threw him 25 and 2. Oh, it's a classic, and it's going to be tough to beat. Yep. 
It's and, UConn. And yeah. it is going against the two seed. And there's a little controversy here with the voting. People thinking that Yeti and Streeter just, you know, they they love, they can vote. No one can vote they for their songs <laughs> like these guys. Look, I'm just saying, everyone can vote. They fixed the voting. for these. No, I, there's nothing illegal going on. They just vote a lot. You can't, you can't fix farm. the voting. There are too many people voting. Sure. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, last week everyone was being skeptical because this song, We're All Gonna Die, has made it number two seed, what? We're All Gonna Die. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. People are upset that Jalen Brunson That's what should have made it. was denied its deep run. I'm not mad about my songs not making it. I think there needs to be justice for Taylor's Jalen Brunson <laughs> <Yeah>. song. <laughs> An instant classic. <laughs> that should be the theme song for the worldies. <laughs> the apocalypses. <laughs> All right, so we move over to the club region. The club region, there's two sounds left. We have an eight seed and a three seed. The eight seed, and this is Lucy, and this was a good one. I was getting bitches left and right. <laughs> <laughs> so we got bitches left and right from Lucy. Going against. This is just Lucy looking for friends on the internet, correct? Looking for friends. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that is going against three seeds, Stephen A. Smith. You fat piece of. <laughs> so, a not a very nice. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a winner, man. Come on what now. What are we doing? There's <laughs> bad words in both these. <laughs> you fat piece of. Okay, great. Wow. So, that, so, who will make the final four? Lucy, I get bitches left and right. Yeah. And Stephen A. Smith, you fat piece of. So, okay. you can. Uh, I'm doing it. We're vote. You can vote at our social media. The final region, the Greg Cody region. Uh. Three seed going against this five seed. I'm just trying to get on the same page with our video team here. The we five noticed. seed, nice hat. I'm going to do that for three years. <laughs> uh, here's the five seed. Trade Marino. Nice hat. Nice hat. It's what he's most known for. It's like I'm holding on to it. Do you remember what Scott Mitchell looked like in that next game after Marino? They were nine and two. They were nine and two. Amazing. And then they lost their last five and missed the playoffs. Nice hat. They were nine and two. But it's It's Marino. And then the next time we saw Marino after Greg Cody traded him, he threw for five touchdowns. Nice hat. And he was Dan the Man on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You can't trade Marino. Nice hat. It's funny every time my dad not understanding that Zazzle can't hear him. The, the part of that that is funniest is that Greg keeps heckling him with nice hat asshole, and we're just playing video for Greg Cody. Let me, I, can I just, I, I want to play that again for the audience and give that the audience that bit of information. Please understand that Greg Cody is just heckling a television. It's not that he's talking directly to Jonathan Zazlo. Can't trade Marino. <laughs> nice hat. Ago, nice Marino. hat, Zazlo. It's what he's most known for. It's like I'm holding on to it. Do you remember what Scott Mitchell looked like in that next game after Marino They got were 9-2. and two. They were 9-2. Oh, and two. Amazing. And then they lost their last five and missed the playoffs. <laughs> nice they hat. They were 9-2. and two. But it's, it's Marino. Nice and then hat. the next time we saw Marino after Greg Cody yeah, traded him, he threw for five touchdowns. Nice and he was hat. Dan the Man on the cover of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> you can't trade Marino. Nice hat, <laughs> so that's a strong five seed right there that is going up against again they weren't in the same room no it's <laughs> it's, it's it's honestly confusing it's like a cat seeing a bird on the it tv wasn't the and same going day. after it <laughs> and then greg cody sold a bunch of nice hat it was our biggest seller honestly <laughs> merchandise shopped out the greg cody show.com so that five seed nice hat was going up against three seed from vegas i don't miss my wife Top Are there any none. good Greg it's Cody stories not told by Greg Cody about Greg Cody yeah. before we get him out of here? I oh, have okay. a couple, but I'm not telling them. <laughs> Baby! That's yeah, my that guy. kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't. No, I'm quiet. You know what? I hadn't left the hotel until last night. I'm a very quiet man. I'm yes. A, you know, I'm a married man. I don't cheat on my wife, despite that <laughs> gratuitous line in back in that my you day. Wrote. That I wrote. <laughs> you, know, I'm, you know, I wish you were here, my wife. I really miss her. <laughs> no, I don't. That's the thing about my, being married. You know, you're not allowed to say, I don't miss my wife. I've been gone two days. I haven't been gone long enough to miss my wife. I'm sorry. I call her. You I'm on the phone with her for 30 her. seconds. You know, that what am I? Then, Hello. All right. All right. We'll see you. All right. And then, you know, I'm going to see her in two days. I was jumping Charlie. Good. And that's it. I love that part. <laughs> I was jumping Charlie. Good. Not how are you doing? <laughs> 
So that's our tournament. Go to our Instagram, vote, see who makes it to the final four. Very exciting. Yeah. Did any of you watch the season finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm last night? The series finale of Not Curb yet. Your Enthusiasm. Series finale, please. Seems that I'm the only one in this room that has seen I it. Saw it. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, They'll be back, Dan. There'll be no. He, you, they're not. They have gonna, said this before. Yeah, they have. yeah. But, but this time they not, said it's for realsies. Oh, okay. I Sorry. mean, he's he's seventy six, isn't he? Whoa, what does that mean? Oh yeah. Without spoiling anything, oh, were there any? Goodness. Did they leave anything open ended? Um, don't don't spoil uh, anything. But no, blink twice. Uh, no. <laughs> the Seinfeld finale stunk. I thought, how was this, Roy? Because I fell asleep. I was watching for fell five asleep? minutes and I fell asleep. Well, that's asleep. how it was. Yes. I think they landed the plane on this one. Uh, I think it was a very good series finale. Uh, Billy's making noises back here. He's watched it as well, Billy. One little comment that uh, leaves some room for uh, something. <laughs> there always is. All right. Well put, Billy. Thank you for <laughs> all the Spoiler. elaboration that was helpful there. <laughs> something that'll lead to something. I would like some help from the people around here who are more internet savvy than I am. When I am going, and that means all of you, because <laughs> I believe all of you know more about what is happening right now with artificial intelligence and the ways that the internet fools you and how the internet grabs you by having the keys that it needs to have to your interests. I had show up on my feed the other day just the phrase, heat's toxic comeback. And then this is what showed up after it. And I just thought as I was reading it, this was not written by a human being. This was written by a computer. Now, uh, my computer is trying to entice me with some words. Toxic is a word I see all over the place on X. And here is what I read, Stugatz, that felt to me like it was written by a computer because I didn't understand. Heat's toxic comeback. What does that mean? The Miami Heat's potential comeback in the NBA playoffs has sparked a range of reactions among fans and critics with anticipation of a toxic environment on social media regardless of the team's performance. This comes as the Heat might play with a healthy team tonight following a period of inconsistent performance that has led to a divided fan base. Some fans argue that the team is not held to the same standard in the regular season as in the playoffs, while others are concerned about bandwagon's return, bandwagon, bandwagon fans returning if the Heat win. Critics have expressed dislike for the Heat Heat, noting their tendency to end other team seasons. The emotional impact of the Heat's losses is also evident, with fans expressing being in shambles over the team's loss. Despite the unpredictability, the Heat are more than capable of winning five of their last six games. Well, first of all, they're not. But that was written by a computer, correct? That's not written by a human being. That's just a bunch, that's a word jumble that's thrown together because people, uh, or something, somewhere, is putting together a, a number of words meant to get my attention, correct? You read that on Sports Illustrated, or I'm asking you guys, is that just nonsense? Are you guys discovering again and again that you're being fed something that's not being written by human beings? Are you skeptical? Are you skeptical when you run across? I'm still that? not reading, so I don't know. I do think uh, with that article in particular, there seems to be this funny thing with Heat Twitter where they're enjoying more going after each other about who's more right about the state of the organization than actually watching the basketball games. So I think it's possible that a real human being decided, let me get in on on all of that and create an article out of this. But that does sound like an AI-generated article. <laughs> was there a byline, and what website was it? No, it was X. It wasn't an article. It was just it was something that a was A series shown. of tweets? Uh, no, it wasn't a series of tweets. It's just as part of – it wasn't a tweet. It wasn't a tweet by somebody. I can show you what it is. It's just sort of it's at the like top of my, thing? just at the top, top of something, some things that were trending. I noticed it, and I'm like, why is this here? Like, what is mm. this? What it, it just felt like it was placed there in order to grab my attention by something. Is this not happening to you guys where you're reading things and you're... And you're assuming that it's not written by a human being? I'll tell you that the, the algorithm on X has gotten to a point where if you look at one tweet about a topic, then your entire For You channel is that tweet. Yeah. So at this point, like my For You is only Miami Heat basketball when I purposefully follow a number of different accounts that are meant for everything else. And yet when I go there, it's just this Heat's toxic comeback. 
I don't even know what a toxic comeback is. I don't even know how that's possible. Is is it is it saying that them coming back in the game is a bad thing? Is it saying that them getting healthy at the right time is a bad thing? Like I really don't understand what it even means. Well, I think they're saying whoever wrote it uh, that the fans are toxic. That some fans well, yeah. are okay with them kind of mailing it in during the regular season because they'll get it done in the postseason, and, and some fans hate it. I feel like it's just a computer that knows how to make things divisive. I think these are <laughs> questions an editor would ask a writer yeah. to clarify before they publish something. Did you write this or did a computer write it? <laughs> Who's being toxic? Please clarify. <laughs> I saw Stugat. Uh, I don't know. Here, give me the stat of the day music. Uh, I will give it to the people here because I want to. Uh, I just read something the other day that uh, an announcer said Mike Trout goes yard to pull the halos within seven. <laughs> start of the day. Start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day. Start of the day. It is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. (laughs) Mike Trout has four home runs this year. And four RBI. <laughs> four solo shots, huh? No Shohei there anymore to be on base, at least. I thought the stat was going to be the amount of time Trout is homer to bring his team within seven. <laughs> Jessica today was telling us about, and I still have not seen this. Uh, I don't know what world it comes from. Uh, is it mixed martial arts, Jessica? You said that somebody got slapped so hard that a banana came out of the banana peel? I don't know if, like, yeah. uh, again, I saw this on, on Twitter, and I don't know any of the context. It's a it's bare knuckle boxing. The guy in the left's name, I think, is Cub Hawkins. But I just saw this video, and the, the banana just goes flying, and I immediately thought this is something that three years ago Dan would have talked about for 45 minutes on the Levitard show. <laughs> How did that happen? How did the banana? Oh, well. <laughs> so it's looking like. Oh, wow. That could happen. Let me paint the picture for the people listening. It's a, it's like a weigh-in face-off type right. thing. One of the guys is holding a banana. The other fighter slaps the guy with the banana in the face, and his reaction sends the banana flying out of the peel. Well, the hand so that was still- holding the banana kind of jerked up. But right? he's it's st- squeezed. But yeah. at first, you just think he throws all of it. No, no, no. He squeezes the banana <laughs> out of the peel, so the peel is still in his hand, and he's, like, dazed with a peel in his hand. Yeah. Okay, uh, for the people, this is amazing, funny, and sad. That's Dada 5000, a street fighter from Miami, and you're coming up to the weigh-in publicity with a banana in your right hand, and, and comically, that banana is indeed cartoonishly peeled down to the side so that you see both the peel peeled down and half of the naked banana is exposed. And the slap catches so cleanly that the guy holding the banana gets a little knocked out and half of the banana that was squeezed ends up going over Dada 5000's shoulder. That is amazing. Where's it been all show? <laughs> How did we get to this this? late the banana. <laughs> and there's no one at that way in that happened in front of no one there was no one there so i was right you were right yes and and chris cody is right when he says do you know the amount of force that has to be squeezed in order to make that banana fly over the shoulder <laughs> but the banana stays intact it's not like it gets like squished the banana somehow is intact half, flies well, out of the not field intact. half of it is still in the knocked out guy's hand but the other half is not <laughs>